This is Tower Defense Simulator's Quick Draw Challenge, tied to what is the single hardest badge to obtain in the entire game. I mean sure, you have challenges like Hardcore Solo or Winning with Only a Few Towers, but this is different. It's directly coded into the game, has been designed by the developers, and offers an extremely exclusive reward, which I want. So this is how my attempt to be quick draw went. Now firstly, how do you even get this badge? Well on the surface it's uh, quite simple, TDS has a special Badlands Desert themed game mode, and if you speedrun this mode and triumph in under 18 minutes, you get the secret reward. Now the simplicity of that description is undercut a bit by the raw numbers, as this is currently the rarest obtainable badge in the game. For example, 430,000 people have the regular Badlands badge, whereas only 30,000 have Quick Draw, a number that's even crazier when you consider that Hidden Wave, a nightmarishly impossible game mode that's been removed for the past 3 years, has almost the exact same number. This is not easy. To start with, I needed a team and a strategy. After seeing in the party queue channel of the TDS Discord for like 30 minutes, it was actually very boring. I ended up in a private server with who would become my three teammates. Winston, cosplaying as Gus Fring, Noob Master with a pretty funny shirt, and Quivar, kind of the team captain. Now we each had designated role and team composition, as we were using a strategy guide, nicknamed Quick Draw Quest. Why were we using a strategy guide? Well, here's an old recording of me playing Badlands normally, and it took 32 minutes. Unless you're literally a top 0.001% player, you cannot do this without extreme coordination. So with all this in mind, and after a few false starts due to QVAR for getting his gold perk, I was a bit nervous as I loaded into the game, and loaded, and loaded. I wouldn't say my internet is bad, bad but it's also not great, and due to the poor design of special mode intermissions, I ended up spawning in on wave 1 rather than 0, losing me $50 worth of farm income, but I mean surely $50 can't matter that much, right? In this strategy, I had the role of player 1, which meant for the early game I was meant to place a few shotgunners and farm for money, but due to missing that $50, I had to wait to place my tower, and we immediately lost some time. But soon after I did get it, where I tried my best to make up for the lost time. Winston and Noob Master also placed shotgunners on the other two paths this map has, being as they were players 2 and 3, while QVAR took the hardest role of player 4, providing additional coverage to each lane with the gold scout. There were a few problems, such as when we leaked some shadows on my side of the lane, but we tightened up soon after, and I started onto the next segment of the strategy, essentially just consisting of spamming ace pilot. At this point you might wonder, why not use towers like accelerator or engineer? Basically just because this strategy is meant for people without those towers, and I didn't want to spend 3 hours trying to get a party for an alternate strat, so it was these planes that I upgraded one by one. We took yet more damage as somehow this one breaker just kinda snuck through the middle lane very discreetly, but by wave 24 I had maxed out my 4 ace pilots and then began to max out 5 more ace pilots. We had some trouble in wave 27, as Winston and Noob Master disagreed about where to place ace pilots, and after reviewing the VODs and checking the footage, I can confirm, Winston was actually right. Noob Master's ace pilots should have been over here. I mean to be fair, this placement guide and screenshot is not the most clear, but these placements would end up sticking for the rest of the match. Then this guy joined, and said to subscribe. No, obviously that didn't happen, still do it. I then placed Electroshockers, the unique tower to my role, in preparation for the tank zombies in wave 30. Impossibly the worst play in my life, I accidentally sold the Electroshocker I had just maxed out, thinking I had clicked on farm. I was like, wait, where did, where did that other Electro go? Wasn't it just here? I quickly placed it back, and we survived the tanks, which meant I was onto the final part of the strategy, where I essentially just spammed rangers, all set to the strongest targeting. This strategy proved its worth as we made it through the next waves, and it became apparent that we would likely win, with the question being, would it be on time? Then, the Gunslinger boss spawned, and started his procession. QVAR chained Commander's Call of Arms ability, while at this point I had placed everything I could, so I just gotta sit back and watch. Winston used Max ability to canter the stuns, but the boss's health bar was shrinking slowly, what felt like very, very, very slowly. I checked my recording software at this point and saw a time of 19.15, however, I knew I had started recording before we joined the game, so without that time I thought we might still be clear, but it would be very close. The gunslinger died at the fork in the path, and as the zombie disappeared, all four of us held their breaths, well, maybe I don't know what they were doing. As the time popped up. Real quick, guess what we got? With Noob Master placing some planes in the wrong spot, me being late on multiple upgrades, leaking multiple unexpected zombies, we got a time of 
17 minutes and 58 seconds, meaning we earned the prize and complete quick draw with quite literally a second of spare time. Yeah, we were built different. This was also Qvar's first time being this map even before doing it normally. What an absolute guilt. We all celebrated for a bit afterwards before leaving to check out the new item. As a reward for winning, I earned the Badlands skin for the Cowboy Tower, with this badge being the only way to obtain this skin. And you'd think for how difficult this is, the reward would be insane. And... I like it. It adapts the features of the zombie in the map, particularly the Hus, not the most iconic zombie. I honestly never even noticed this guy, I had to check on the wiki, but it does at least have some particle effects, I think which are meant to be emitting from its rib cage, which is uh, kinda gross, but. The next four levels give it some slight upgrades, but the maxed appearance is by far the best, as it actually takes on the look of the gunslinger boss itself. It's got the skeletal head, the crossing bandoliers, the guns, and in general I think it's a pretty fun idea. But if you compare it to the Slaughter Warden, which is a direct parallel reward in the way you also have to beat a secret challenge, it seems like the Badlands Cowboy just doesn't have the same special feeling. Like one is FNAF, one is a dead guy. It could just be another one of the many normal skins. Still, I'm glad to have it, and I'm glad to finally beat Quick Draw. Please consider subscribing if you aren't, leave a comment, maybe even press the like button, and uh, do not beat Quick Draw, okay? The rarer this thing is, the more my stock price goes up. This is very important. Anyways, bye. Thanks for watching.